Okay, now I'm a little bit nervous about doing this. I haven't done this in so many years. It's ridiculous. But as friends of mine used to say, when nervous, jump right in, do it anyway. Even if it doesn't work, you can always delete the stupid tape. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do a few things with makeup. If I can make this work. Now, there are a number of effects you can do with makeup. What we are going to do today is we're going to build a lich. Now, what exactly is a lich? A lich is an undead magic user that has somehow managed to surmount death and uh, used his evil magic to figure out how to keep on living so he could continue to perform what he wanted to do in life. Okay, All of his dark magic arts. It's an undead creature that is part vampire, part white, part zombie part skeleton, but extremely intelligent, highly intelligent monster. Okay, now I'm doing this a little bit quick and I'm doing this with some stenciling. These are stencils which you can pick up quite often around uh, Halloween time. These are very cheap. I'm not sure how well they're going to work or how well the effects are going to work. Normally, when you're doing advanced makeup like this, what you really want to do is um, have a, a different makeup brush, swab, etc. for every single different color that you use and effect that you use. I'm not sure how this is going to look when I'm done. I'm just going to try out and see what happens. It may just end up being mud on my face. Sometimes mud on your face is great learning experience, as Mario Bava used to say. Right, okay, remember, never do that one again, kind of thing. Now, in a lich, you have a very interesting combination of problems because you have the fact that they are undead. And being undead, their body is trapped magically into different forms of decay. So, you can have some parts which that didn't work too well. Oh, um, which are in advanced decay, and some parts which are in less decay. Now, what you want to do when creating undead creatures is you want to work with earth tones and earth-like tones. which creates a variety of special effects. I don't like the way that green's working. Let me get another one. Now, the basic rule of thumb is makeup can be layered. The easiest way to understand layering in makeup is to think about what type of makeup you're using. 
paste, which is most Halloween makeup and that kind of makeup effects, is very simple, but very hard to actually work with because about the only thing you can add to paste is powder. Powder you can add on top of anything. Anything at all that you create, you can throw powder on top of. Now, sometimes you can do things like lining eyeliner or lipstick on top of paste or on top of something else. Powder is the only thing that because the powder sticks to everything that you can't really layer on top of. And quite often if you get nothing but mud on your face then you are mud on the face. But we are just playing around with Halloween makeup. So if it works, great. If it doesn't work, who cares? It's not like it really matters. We're not using Hollywood special effects. We are just kind of screwing around and having fun and seeing what happens. Now when you're working with the idea that different aspects of the face can take on different forms of decay, then you're working with different colors and different ideas of what decays best and what looks best amongst the decay. Undead go through a variety of decays. You have the normal skin and for interesting things, I'm going to leave this eye alone. I'm going to let this eye say it magically crystallized when the Lich was creating its magic. And I'm going to leave that eye completely alone. Now, you have the fact that it goes from almost a light pinkish color to a disease color, which is a green, and a red pink. Then it goes to a form of gray, You can also mix colors like you can on a on oil paints and you can kind of soften the lines. You can make the edges less sharp and you can fade the makeup backwards. Kind of like a, a form of um, oil painting. Now I'm not looking too closely at the time, so hopefully I don't go over about 10, 20 minutes. I'm just trying to do this as quick as possible.
if I was doing this properly, what I would do is take a little bit of cleaning solution over the uh, areas in which I'm going to stencil. That way I wouldn't be going one layer on top of the other. One thing you always want to remember about makeup design, when doing makeup, you are not trying to look good at three feet. You're trying to look good at 30. So what might look like extreme mud in a uh, picture or in the mirror as you're working might in fact look better than you actually hope to dream from 100 feet. Now, let's go back out of some of this for a moment, and let's imagine you've got some more bone coming through in some weird places. Maybe not the best effects. But something simple. Now, it looks like I still have some time, at least on this, so 